Right, this is Sandro Lucrezia for Unit 5. Um, right, and Sandro, we'll start off with 1.1. List of values or codes of practice relevant to the work being carried out. The work being carried out? Yeah. Right, health and safety. Right. Uh, like fire exits, make sure they're clear. And, um, easy accessible and they've labelled so you know where they are. Uh, cleanliness, keep things tidy, clean, no, if there's a wet floor or something, put a sign out. Right, okay, good. 1.2, describe the requirements for health, safety and welfare relevant to own work, including Health and Safety at Work Act and requirements from relevant national governing bodies. Signposts and next thing, uh, Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. Right. Signing in, signing in sheets, so if they're not a member of any gym, they yep. sign in, so you know that they're they're liable for for what goes on. Right. And make sure fire exits are visibly clear. And then what about maybe to do with any national governing bodies? So, for example, if, if they wanted to do, say, a spinning class, what sort of training might you have to do to be able to do one of those classes? You just go for a course, don't you, for a spinning class. Spinning right. and circuit training and stuff like that. You know, go for a course, make sure you have your, uh, your license with it. Good, right. 1.3, identify manufacturers' guidelines and instructions for the use of facilities and equipment. Uh, maintenance checks right. every now and then. And use equipment appropriately. No messing about. Make sure it's done properly. Right, okay, that's fine. 1.4, describe why health, safety and welfare are important in an active leisure and recreation environment. It's keeping professional and keeping people safe and yourself safe. Uh, <coughs> what might happen if something does go wrong? Like what? Say, for example, somebody trips up a weight in the um, centre. People get hurt then, won't they? And then what might happen after that? Just they might sue you. Right, okay. So, legal proceedings. Um, 1.5, identify the persons responsible for health and safety in the own workplace. Uh, yourself, employees, and anyone using the gym. Supervisor. Okay, 1.6, outline own organisation's security procedures. What was that? Outline own organisation's security procedures. Uh, barriers, so things in place where you have to like scanning, uh, CCTV, fingerprint access, uh, front desk, people, someone at the front desk, mm -hmm. uh, and lockers. Right, fine. We're now come to then, 2.1, describe the types of hazards that are likely to occur in own area of work and the accidents and injuries each could cause. Wet floors, uh, trips and slips. Leaving like weight plates on barbell. If someone takes one side off, it could swing over and hit someone. Yep. Uh, dumbbells left out, they could do like a chest press, put the weights down and smack their hand on another weight, or they could fall over a weight, or chip back, stand back and stand on it and slip. Right, fine. 2.2, .2, outline how to identify hazards. Uh, you have a tick list, so you walk around, tick if everything's clear. And if it's not clear, do whatever is necessary to clean the place up or right. something like that. Maintenance checks. Good. Keep everything safe. Right. List health and safety list health, safety and security checks to be followed. Uh, run tests on treadmills, you know, make sure they're in line. Good. Uh, park you. Do that. Fire exit checks and maintenance checks on equipment. Right, good stuff. 2.4, describe how to carry out basic risk assessments of the types of hazards that may occur. So, how you carry out a risk assessment at, at a centre. Uh, so, for example, true gym or NI gym. You have a list uh, to see if everything's in the right place. And, and then the probability. Uh, oh, your risk assessment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like if new equipment, you do a risk assessment on it, um, and, and in the morning you 
you do your risk assessment, and then when you leave, you do a risk assessment midday. Right. And keep it updated as well, yeah? yeah. Every day. Right. Describe why it is important to get advice from a relevant colleague if unsure about hazards and risks in the own workplace. Describe why it's important to get advice from a relevant colleague if unsure about hazards and risks in the own workplace. Right. If you need advice on how to use something, uh, do something properly. You know, if you don't know, you ask someone else. They will know or might know. Right. Um, what else have you got written down there? Like, for cleanliness and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, Control of substances, substances hazardous to health. Right. So you make sure everything's in the right place. You know, yeah. And everything flammable or anything like that. Or you wear, wear gloves if anything's sensitive to your skin. Right. Good. Cleaning stuff down. You don't want to use a lot of toilets. The same for yeah. use on treadmills. Right. Good. Two point six. Identify who to ask if unsure about hazards and risks in the own workplace. A uh, supervisor or employer. Uh, or if someone is like ill or not like that, you ask the doctor or something. Right, okay. 2.7, describe how to deal correctly with the types of hazards that may occur in own workplace, taking accounts of risks. Put signs out, put dumbbells back, yeah. clean up, mop up and, and spill. 2.8, identify documents relating to health and safety which may be, which may have to be completed. Park you, uh, your checklist, your tick list, your risk assessment and your induction forms. Good. 2.9, outline <coughs> how to complete health, safety and documents correctly. Health and safety documents correctly. How to file them? Yeah. Somewhere safe where no one can really get to them because it's personal information. Right, fine. Four point one. Describe what is meant by safeguarding and protecting the welfare of children and vulnerable adults. Making sure they're safe and protecting them. Uh, I don't really understand what, what the question. Four point one. So describe what is meant by safeguarding and protecting the welfare of children and vulnerable adults. So how you look after. Um, children, if if you're in charge of it, and vulnerable adults. So if you had any learning difficulties or disabilities, anything like that. Just make sure you're clear in what you're saying. Uh, keep them knowledgeable of what goes on in the gym. And right. What sort of document might you have to have up to date on that? The criminal one. Your uh, CRB check. Yeah. Good. Okay. 4.2, describe own role and responsibilities for safeguarding and protecting children and other vulnerable people. Just keep an eye on them. Check, check, uh, just keep an eye on them, see if they're doing things properly and if they're safe. Right, okay. 4.3, list of four types of abuse. Verbal, sexual, emotional and physical. Right, fine. Outline the basic indicators and impact of each of the four types of abuse. Verbal, like swearing and bullying. Yeah. Sexual, touching, inappropriate behaviour and remarks. Yeah. Uh, emotional, uh, bullying, just get into them all the time. And physical, uh, like lashing out, pushing or grabbing. Fine. Uh, 4.5, describe the risks that individual abusers or potential abusers pose to children and vulnerable people. The risks? Yeah. Uh, injury when distracted. Yeah. To and self-esteem issues. Right, fine. It also might bring the organisation into sort of disrepute if, ah, yeah. if, the, if it goes too far. 4.6, describe organisational policies and procedures in relation to safeguarding and protecting, including the reporting procedures. So if something happened, what would you do to report it? Uh, you, well, you tell manager, yeah. say your boss, or if I'll see who's going on, like with kids, 
branch of social services. We tell you manager, and now that you are in on branch of social services, uh, if you might have to bar someone from the gym. If if you see something happening in the gym, you bar them. Mm-hmm. Uh, involve police if necessary. Good. Uh, how and what to do if concerned about possible abuse? Uh, let supervisor know or a work colleague uh, management fine 4.8 describe how to respond to a child or someone else disclosing abuse or concerns about abuse so if a child said something to you what would you do well you are professional good uh, you don't like try and solve it yourself you let your let management know it's not really what to do with you Right, okay. 4.9, how long what to do if there are barriers to reporting own concerns? So if somebody puts something in the way of you reporting something? This is added pressure. Right, good. Uh, it's not to be afraid of telling management of what's going on. Could be important. Fine. 4.10, identify statutory agencies with responsibilities for safeguarding and protecting. Uh, social services and police. Good. 4.11, outline when to contact statutes. So those that you talked about with responsibilities for safeguarding and protecting. Bear in mind. Injuries, uh, surveyor. When to, so when something happens, you basically probably tells people, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, right, fine. 412, outline how to contact such agencies responsibilities. Phone them, ring them, uh, email them. What else might you do? So say something's happened, what might you do? You might have to... Well, you, uh, you know everything down. Right, good. Keep it on file, stuff like that. Uh, describe why it's important to share concerns about possible abuse with others. Keep people safe. Fine. 4.13, describe why is it important to share concern. Just on that one. 14, describe the limits of own competence with regard to safeguarding and protecting. So your role as a gym instructor wouldn't mean that you've got to do everything, so what sort of stuff might you do and what stuff might you refer on to somebody else to do in that situation. In, like, bullying as well. Yeah, good, yeah. Well, you just... my own problems yeah say a child <coughs> came up to you and said oh somebody's you know done x y and z what what sort of responsibilities would you do and who and who would you tell well it's not really down to you you're not it's not really you're liable for anything it's not your job to take on their mm-hmm. problems or anything you just let management know right fine and why why is it important to treat information about possible abuse confidentially it's personal information. Yeah, a client doesn't want anyone else to know about, so you just don't tell anyone. Good. List the types of accidents, injuries and illnesses that may occur in own area of work. Uh, bangs, slips, uh, chips and falls. Good. I want how to respond correctly to emotional distress. If you're professional, you maybe ask them to speak, speak to them quietly in a an office or something. Um, yeah. Fine. Six three. I went how to deal with accidents, injuries, and illnesses before qualified assistance arrives. So, say for example, somebody's injured themselves and before an ambulance arrives, what would you do? That professional. Keep everyone back. Uh, keep quiet, calm, and out of distress. Good. Six four. Describe how to decide whether to contact the on-site first aid or immediately call the emergency services. Assess yourself how bad it is. If someone's missing an arm or something, you know, yeah. up. Fine. Six five. Identify who is the first, who is the on-site first aid and how to contact them. Uh, notice on chart for all staff and clients to see who first aider is. Yeah. Uh, and for the staff, have a number to call for first aider. Good. Describe the procedures to contact the emergency services. Call nine nine nine. Tell them where. What you want, uh, 
who you want, buy it to this ambulance or police, uh, tell them what's up, uh, the address of where you are, and uh, how urgent the emergency is. Good. Six, seven, outline why it is important to protect the casualty and others involved from further harm. So you I don't want about. anyone else getting injured or casualties, be casualty or uh, getting worse. Yeah. Good. Outline the procedures to protect the casualty and others. Keep them safe. Move them if safe to do so, away from danger area. Yeah. If not, if you can't move them, move them over and move everyone else away. Fine. Outline why is it important to provide comfort and reassurance to a casualty? You talk to them, keep them calm, uh, talk about the plans and stuff and what they do for a living. Keep the mind off in incident. Good. 610, describe why, how to provide comfort and you've answered that there. Um, outline how, outline own responsibilities for reporting into accidents. So what would you fill in if an accident happened? Um, accident book. Good. Uh, I'll, I'll end procedure for reporting the accident. Yet, so you record it in there. Final bit then. Describe the emergency procedures in own place of work. So if something happened at True Gym, what, what would you do? Well, we're on 8-1. Eight, eight, one, yeah. Uh, different, for alarm, different alarms for different incidents like bomb Good. threat or fire alarm. Yeah. Fine. Uh, outline what instructions must be given to the people involved. So if you've got a full gym, say it's 8 o'clock at night, it's really full, what sort of stuff would you be doing? Say, for example, somebody collapsed. Tell them to keep calm. Right. Uh, find out why they collapsed. Like if, if they fell and hit the head or something, or if they're like dehydration, or they've got something wrong with them in the first place. Yeah. You look at the... Uh, that you've done with them. Good. I should tell you on there what, what's up with them. Right. 8.3 Outline the organisational reporting procedures for emergencies. Make sure it's recorded in there. Uh, yeah. Recorded in accident book. Dated, signed, notified. Uh, any amendments. Good. Describe the types of problems that may occur when carrying out emergency procedures. Panic. People are not paying attention. What else might happen with an ambulance, maybe? What about access to a gym? They might be blocked. People might be in the way. Or maybe stairs as well. Stairs, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Describe why problems that occur when <coughs> carrying out emergency procedures should be reported. So you've talked about that, the accident report book, tow manager, etc. Identify who to report problems to. You've said that before. Supervisor, manager, manager, supervisor. <coughs> the management, right? Good stuff. 